Okay, Louva Larson and Eva Von Barr, congratulations on your nomination for Best Makeup for the 100-year-old man who climbed out a window and disappeared. That's a mouthful. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank how you. Did it, uh, you're welcome. How did it feel when you got the news that you'd been nominated? It was sort of amazing because, you know, we, have, we went to the Bake, Up, uh, bake Off in, in L.A., and we did present our work to the Academy. And then they voted straight after you have presented, they place their votes. And then everything is over and then you go back to Sweden and you go like, what do you think? Do you think that we will make it? Or do you think, no, it's, it's tricky. I think it's yeah. difficult. And we had all those discuss discussions about whether we were going to get nominated or not. And then we were in our studio and we hooked most up. Most of the, uh, I mean, most of all, we thought that we wouldn't get nominated no. because, I mean, the films that we were competing with were such a huge films, huge studio films. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, you know. Then they read the names and the first one was Mad Max Fury Road and we were like, well, okay, sort of got that. <laughs> and then... He read The Hundred Year Old Man, and we just started to scream as we <laughs> screamed and screamed and screamed. And I couldn't, we couldn't sort of help ourselves. We were just, ah, like that. And we had like uh, uh, workers working out, out of, like, right outside our windows. They could look down in our studio, uh, and they just, dropped their tools when they <laughs> when we started screaming. They thought some, something was happening. So we had all these work men Just standing and looking standing at and staring us. outside the windows. It was yeah. fantastic. We will never forget it. Well, congratulations again. Uh, let's talk about the movie. How did you two get involved with it? Ooh, we got that. <clears throat> First of all, we it was the producer of the film that contacted us. We had worked with him on the David Fincher film, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Mm -hmm. He was the Swedish uh, co-producer for that. And he called us and said that they were making this film and we have heard about it. And we thought that, I mean, that's a huge job, huge undertaking. And uh, we thought they would go for someone else. But then he called us and you f <laughs> we felt like, okay, uh, this this is probably too hard. <laughs> you <laughs> to would do. just want to hang you up. Wanna, you want to say thanks for calling us. That's amazing. <laughs> really, really, we'll get back to you or never. Click. <laughs> because I mean, if, if we would fail this this film, uh, we would never work again in Sweden. It was it's a suicide mission. Mm -hmm. It's the the hardest kind of makeup to do, doing an old age makeup. And at the same time, we also had to do it on a very uh, kind of well-known Swedish comedian slash actor that everyone in Sweden would know. Mm -hmm. so that was, yeah. Somebody who's also like half the age of the character in the movie, as I understand it. He's like 50 years old, right? And he, was, he was 47 when we, when we shot the oh film. Oh my God, wow. So yeah. even less than that. Um, <laughs> Okay, well, talk about how you turn that this forty-seven-year-old man into a one hundred-year-old man. Uh, you know, research and uh, what kind of prosthetics process you used. Well, it was a lot of. We started with a lot of research, just looking at real hundred-year-old people. Uh, it's it's easy to go the makeup route that you look at other makeups as reference and like look at what did they do, the, the ones that did some really good work. But I think the key to make it look good is to look at the actual 100-year-old people that we have all over, <laughs> over the world. Uh, and that was what we started with. And then we had to, I mean, we, he's not only 100 years old, we have him in uh, eight other steps in the film. So we had to make him both younger and then take him up in several stages up to hundreds. We had to find some kind of line where we would have this uh, Alan character at the same time as we needed to, I mean, we were gonna see Robert as Robert Gustafsson almost. 
as well. It was a tricky thing to, to go about, actually. Mm -hmm. So, all right, tell us how, you know, take, take us through the nuts and bolts process of every single day, you know, like getting up at four or five in the morning and, you know, mm -hmm. how long it took to apply this stuff and... Uh, well, it took uh, the 100-year the uh, character uh, took four and a half hour to mm -hmm. apply. He had 10 pieces, uh, silicone pieces, and then he had a gelatin nose, and he had gelatin air pieces, he had contact lenses, and he also had dentures. And we also did punch hair into his ball cap, every day so we had to make lots of ball caps with punched hair and it was uh, that was kind of hard because you throw away all the pieces eventually after you've used them once so then you have to apply new pieces and since we also fabricated all the pieces by ourselves uh, we had to sort of when we stopped shooting that day we had to see to that he had new pieces for the next day. Uh, so it was a constant work that really never stopped and you got really, really tired. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, and then we, we tried to use smaller pieces uh, in the early, early stages. And then we had two more stages when he was quite old, where we used a mixture of different kinds of materials. That was also uh, tricky because it's tricky to use so many different materials to get the appearance that it's one guy, really. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that we did we did a lots and lots and lots of prosthetic makeup. Mm -hmm. uh, and some days when we're shooting in Hungary, for when we did all the period work with with Robert, we did like two stages at one day. So we took one stage off and then we applied a new stage and it was also very difficult to figure out what stage is it now. Oh my God, what, what did he have in stage five? I can't remember anymore. So we had to add notes and all the pieces were everywhere and it was just, uh, it was just quite hard. Yeah. But also a lot of fun. And Robert also really did enjoy the makeup in his different stages and thought that he, we really helped him uh, to be able to play all those different ages. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure it does. I mean, um, I'm curious also how many different designs that you went through as before you came up with what this guy was going to look like. I mean, you know, where there's some where he had like less teeth or, you know, more hair or, you know, like how, how long did it take you to come up with a look that, you know, seemed <laughs> right and seemed natural and, Actually, not very long time because we had to. Uh, at, at first, we, we we got this call, the nightmare call that we kind of call it <laughs> that we that we didn't want to take this project. But then we did it, and and we were up for a test to do a test makeup, and uh, we were told we had like two months to prepare for that. But then, right after we had the life cast of Robert, we had this took his life cast, made a copy of him in, in plaster. Uh, I was working in London on another film, and I got a call from the producers, and they said, uh, Robert's schedule changed, so he can only do it in 10 days from now, the test. <laughs> mm -hmm. So then I just flew back to Sweden, and I sculpted everything over the night. And it wasn't, we didn't have any time to design anything. We just produced a test makeup for his, for his oldest stage, which looked crap, by the way, but <laughs> they kind of liked it. So we had to stay in that kind of uh, area, but then we re redid, remade everything from scratch. But we also started with the oldest guy first, and then we made him, so that's how we started out. Then we made the other looks from the older guy, not really from what Robert looks like today, we instead, we just started with the old guy and then we took it the wrong direction, if, if I can say that. I uh, see. Okay. Yeah, so that's how we invented his different looks. 
And then I think it was also because we wanted perhaps the guy that when Robert is supposed to be like 20 or 30, we wanted to, to do it with another actor. But Felix, the director, he really wanted Robert to do that also. So we were like, well, you know, the guy is uh, 47, 47 <laughs> and we can never make him look 25. That's not possible. But we sort of we used lots of anti-aging creams and stuff like that and gave him contact lenses and airbrushed him and gave him a wig and so on to make him look younger. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing. Um, I remember a few years ago uh, when motion capture was kind of first emerging, um, there was a lot of talk in the you know, the makeup category as being sort of like a dying art form. Mm -hmm. But you look at the three movies that are nominated this year, your movie, Mad Max and The Revenant. I mean, it's hard to imagine those movies existing without some kind of traditional, old fashioned Hollywood, you know, or not just Hollywood, but <laughs> making makeup. Yeah. Um, yeah. You care to talk about that a bit? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really, really hard to to replace traditional makeup techniques with digital. Uh, I think, okay, it works if you're doing aliens or big creatures or anything like that that no one had ever seen before. But if you're doing like in The Revenant where you have a, a guy fighting a bear, you kind of, <laughs> you, you know what, what a, what a uh, injured, human being look, looks like and when a bearded human being looks like. You know how an old man looks like. I mean, the only one that's kind of off is the Mad Max, but that's a, a, a world that uh, they came up with and it's all traditional makeup. Uh, it would just look ridiculous if, if, if they made everything in the computer and it wasn't needed at all. No, but I think that also uh, to make a combination of traditional makeup and to do some things in, in the computer, you can get really amazing results. But if you would skip the tra traditional makeup, I think that would be uh, a big mistake. And I think it's quite nice that it is three movies competing that is really makeup. Mm -hmm. I guess it all just really depends on what the movie needs more than anything. Yes, of course. Yes, that's all. What's it all about? It's. I mean, the makeup itself is not. I mean, the film is not about makeups. It's to carry the 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 story of the film forwards. And I think, I mean, in all these three films, it's very crucial that the makeup exists. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about how. Uh, surprised you guys were when you got nominated. What would it mean to win uh, for you guys? Oh. <laughs> I, think that, <laughs> I think that it's uh, for us, since we are working out of Sweden, that would be absolutely a catastrophe. I think that no one will call us. Everybody would be really scared and really intimidated. I think that has happened a bit. People get really scared. And I think that we will end up having no work at all. So let's not hope for that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I'd say I'd, I'll actively root against somebody, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, uh, I think we are also up for, I think it's a really hardcore competition. I also mm. think that not a lot of people saw our movie and everybody has seen uh, The Revenant and Mad Max. So I think it's difficult. Mm -hmm. But we are very honored, and yeah. it's fantastic uh, for us to to even play along with those fantastic films. Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations again, and uh, you know, good luck. And, thank, uh, you. thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me. You too. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Bye. All right. Bye. Have a good day. You, you too. too. Bye bye. bye.